Hi, welcome to Town Meeting TV, CCTV. I'm here today with David Colossal Sanders Holub. Um, and we I ran across something, somehow I ran across what you were doing and it seemed compelling and interesting and I wanted to hear more about what it is that you do. Who are you? What is it that you do? What do you call this? <laughs> Uh, well, I think the, the short answer is that I uh, like to sit around and amuse myself and mm -hmm. try to make myself laugh. And um, I've been writing jokes um, in a notebook uh, since eighth grade, I think was the first joke I wrote. Um, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. And so I've always been writing. I've always, always been writing funny things. And then for the, like the past two decades, um, I was a graphic designer working for publications and newspapers and magazines. And um, but as you know, so I, I got I cut my teeth uh, using like Photoshop and all that stuff for a, a long time. But as always, you know, producing illustrations and designs for other people. Yeah. Uh, and then I got the chance to just start doing my own art. And so I combined these two things I'd been doing on my own and uh, professionally into one thing. And so I started just making my own art and exploring the inside of my head. Cool. <laughs> do you still have those notebooks from when you were? Of course, yeah. You but do? I, do you, is it just been a running series um, of notebooks? or Pretty much. And like I've moved around so much in my life from state to state. And there's a few things that I always pack up for safekeeping. And that first folder where a lot of my early writing is, because I wrote little stories in high school. Um, and I somehow I got a Hulk Hogan folder. It, you mean like it looked like Hulk Hogan on the outside, or it was, it was like a yeah. folder, okay. but it was Hulk Hogan. Okay. Uh, I think I bought it ironically, like in in high school. Yeah. Anyway, that's where all of my early things are, and I know exactly where that is right now. And, yeah. and so yeah, it's uh, um, it's just it's been a part of my life. Oh. Um, yeah. So there's not a particular notebook that you are you go back to year well, after year. Well, uh, th then I I do have those early note. I have all the early notebooks, yeah. and I probably have a stack, uh, you know, that high of, yeah. of notebooks. Do you brand commit to a particular kind of notebook now? No, it's kind of like go whatever I find, whatever's like laying around. Yeah. Um, sometimes they've been tiny notebooks that I yeah. keep in my pocket. I've had have a bunch of those. Sometimes they're bigger ones that I write. Yeah. Um, and of course now, like the, the unfortunate thing is I do all my note keeping on my phone or on my iPad, so I don't oh. have those anymore. I don't have yeah. the, I don't, yep. I'm not making any new notebooks, but uh, I had, a, I, I don't know if you'd call it an epiphany the other day, um, but just, just a, a way of living that I, I really recommend to like other people is write it down. Um, people always ask like, how do you come up with your ideas? Um, and I, I, I don't know if I have more ideas than anybody else, but what I do uh, do is, uh, is write them down. Yeah. Because you think you're going to remember something and you're not going to remember it at all. Yeah. Do you go back and look at those ideas? As somebody who does write things down, I write a lot of things down. Yeah. <laughs> When do you go back and look at them? I, you know, I, it's so funny. I constantly go back and look through old files because, yeah. you know, um, I've just written so, so many things, and especially so many like short things, jokes, and stories, and um, I'm always like, what I might have thought of something 20 years ago that's really funny and really unique. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I do. I, I go back and, well, and read those old notebooks, and sometimes I'll find find a, a weird thought that I had. Um, I'm trying to. Th I can't think of anything specific, but. Um, you know, I, I've recently gone back and found a joke that I wrote like 15 years ago. Um, oh, that's what I, there's, there's a piece that I have, uh, a popular piece that I, that I do, and it's, a, uh, it's an owl that's wearing, he's wearing a shirt that says, uh, my favorite birds are is birds. It on your web, is it on your website? Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, is he says, uh, my favorite birds are birds that eat birds. Okay. Uh, or that's what his shirt is saying, and um, I wrote that joke like 15 years ago, and it was just—it's always stuck in my head. And, and then it came back to you, and you. Yeah, well, I wanted to do um, 
I wanted to do a uh, just a, an owl wearing a flannel shirt. Okay. That's where the that's just what I wanted to do, and uh, and then I thought, well, if he's wearing a, a flannel shirt, he should wear a t-shirt underneath it. So I <laughs> then made the t-shirt. It was just a gray gray yeah. t-shirt. Yeah. And then I was like, well, it, it should say something funny on it. Like, you know, there's an opportunity for a joke right there. Yeah. And so that's what, that's what I, it yeah. was an afterthought. Yeah. But when I hear people talking about that piece, it's, yeah. it's, it's not about the owl and the flannel shirt he's wearing. It's about the birds that eat birds. birds are, yeah. People like to say that phrase. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially, and I'm, some, I like some, I like when you have to explain a joke a little bit because it brings you into it yeah. a little bit more, so that's cool. Um, you said a little bit of your background, but you know, what did you do before you did this? So I don't think we've named this yet. Artist, joke maker, yeah, digital I, creator. It's like, um, I always have a, I struggle to define what I do other than, you know, I have an art business and I make um, funny illustrations that I put on different, things you know so um you have you know. a creamy strong man is this what sort of started it all for you no not oh, okay. really um no i i and i so uh when i first moved to vermont or shortly after i moved to vermont which was going to be like five years ago yeah. uh which is five minutes i learned in vermont um to yeah. be living here but sure. um i created i got fascinated with um old postcards yeah you know, like those Tickner Brothers postcards from uh, the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And I, I thought I might do a series of postcards in that style. Yeah. But something a little off. So, um, I'll keep, I'll hold these up while you're talking about them. Yeah, so that, the, the uh, bread loaf bridge uh, was one of them. And I, I did like f five. Um, bread loaf, butternut. Got it. Yeah, so I did like five of those, and I thought, funny enough, I thought the bread loaf bridge was gonna be the hit of the series. Yeah. Because like it, it was the most straightforward. Yeah, I, I also did like a swimming giant. Um, I did a flannel shirt statue, um, and and I never thought that the creamy strong man was was gonna be uh, the hit of that of that series, but it, it absolutely has been. So yeah, that's like a. Uh, and that, so that was the biggest. These are, and where do folks get these if they want to get? Uh, wanna... Well, I, I'm in close to 70 shops in Vermont cool. now. Um, yeah. So it's kind of all over the state. And then of course uh, my website and uh, I sell, sell off of that too, but um, yeah. So, but tell me a little bit about your process. Um, you said, you know, you've got your book of um, jokes, and then you have, what, you know, are you drawing this out? Are you going straight to Photoshop? Are you? Yeah, it kind of it kind of depends on um, the particular uh, piece. Um, so, a lot of what I do um, are greeting cards, um, and that's that's really how that's really what got my business going was um, selling greeting cards. Bread loaf and butter. Yeah. <laughs> Bread loaf. Sorry. Yes, a good one. You know, as we say around my house. Um, uh, so these so, greeting cards that are birthday cards, or yeah, yeah. Uh, any occasion. Yeah. Um, what's really popular now, or just like no occasion at all. It's just like a funny joke that somebody wants to kind of share with their yeah. friend or or yeah. whatever. Um, so those are a lot of the cards. Um, those are more joke driven. So I will think of a joke, think of a funny, you know, something funny, yeah. and that's the impetus for the piece. Um, so you're kind of helping to save the postal service. You have a mission. You're a mission-driven. Absolutely, a hundred percent. And I know all my postal workers by name. Um, so, so yeah, a lot of it's joke-driven. Um, I'll think like uh, come up with something funny, and I could, you know, like oh, that would be funny for a birthday card, or that would be a funny phrase um, to use for an anniversary card. Um, a lot of my Vermont stuff comes is more concept-driven. Mm -hmm. So the first, I think the first piece that got some traction here in Vermont was a piece I did uh, called the Virgin's Moose Rodeo. Okay. Um, and Is that the, a real thing? There's one in here because it's, 
that one there. Okay. Um, so that that piece in particular, I you know people like moose around here, um, even though um, that's nice. You know you don't see them every day, but yeah. um, it, it's kind of a, an animal that's popular, especially in this region. And so I I just thought it would be funny if if I if there used to be moose rodeos, and so I had that concept in my head, and it was just a matter of of making it, piecing together, you know, uh, taking apart a moose in Photoshop. Is this a particular person who's on here, or is it? That is just an old cowboy uh, making the gesture that I wanted, and yeah. uh, I, I have to go to public domain images a lot for my, my stuff, which is why a lot of it's old looking. Yeah. Um, so I just found that cowboy that seemed to be doing what I wanted him to do. And so, um, you know, I just, I just created that moose uh, in Photoshop. And what's hilarious, I think, about that particular piece is um, so many people have asked me if it's real or just think it's real. Uh -huh. um, those, yeah. Was this really from 1923? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah th like I didn't realize... Uh, we used to have moose rodeos in Vermont, you know, stuff like that. Or uh, one one person said, um, like, too bad about animal rights these days that we can't do that anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, it, too bad, yeah, because yeah, yeah. that would. I wish we still had moose rodeos going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, this makes me wonder, and I, you must hear this. This must be something that you hear a lot. You know, I'm going to ask you about next AI. Oh yeah. How does this affect? How does AI and Dolly and some of the AI generating software affect what you do? Um, well, the good news for me right now is that I don't know if you've used it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not great. Yeah. Uh, one time, I don't remember what I was trying to do because I've used it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't remember what I was trying to do. Is it was I was trying to complete somebody's like sweater, you know, because yeah. like I'll, I'll you know be manipulating images, you know, sometimes I'll need a complete picture, but it's like cut off. Yeah. So I was just trying to complete the sweater of this uh, woman, and it always gives you like three options when you like type in what you want it to create, yeah. and uh, or generate, I should say, and um, the the first two were like close to completing the sweater and then the third one there's all of a sudden a guy like behind this lady <laughs> just like looking I'm like whoa it is like late at night <laughs> um so it, um for what i'm doing it's not it's not uh very useful i will have to say there's one piece in here that i did use it on because i couldn't figure out this one here okay. the uh, creamy world headquarters yeah. Um, and so I was, you know, the, the, the point of that one was obviously to, to make a skyscraper in the shape of a creamy. Yeah. And so like I was trying and trying using my normal techniques, which would be like to, to get, um, like a, a bunch of different office windows and kind of manipulate them. So they look like they're curved going around a, mm -hmm. a circular structure. And I was working and working and working, couldn't figure it out. So then I was like, oh, let's see what AI will do. And so I, I you know, if you type in uh, ice cream cone office building, like it's nonsense what it, what it produces. But I kind of got it right. Yeah. Um, I kind of like using my, my uh, the techniques I, I use uh, for my other work. And, um, and then it, it started to complete it a little for me. And so it, it kind of, uh, it was just a, useful tool in like kind of getting me to the next part. You pull that image out, put it in Photoshop and build on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it seems like you really have to have like the prompts and understand how to work with the prompts. Yeah, it, it really is. And, um, or just, I, I've found that if, if you kind of let it know what you're trying to do, because yeah. like what I'm doing is more like it's beyond the creative capacity I think yeah. for AI to do because it doesn't have a sense of humor probably and it's it doesn't know really, what like yeah. whimsy is you know yeah. it's it's based on reality like what already exists and like this stuff doesn't exist there's not an ice cream cone skyscraper yeah. oh I thought yeah okay um, 
but like for instance, um, I did a uh, a piece. Uh, it was a Vermont scene that I that I did, and I really just wanted a steeple sticking out of the of the trees. Uh huh. And um, what I normally would have done for that is uh, gone through this entire library of postcards, you know, that's freely available online, and found a steeple, cut it out, put it there. Yeah. And that would have been pretty easy. It would have taken me probably 20 minutes, let's say, to do that. Yeah. With uh, AI, I just, I circled where I wanted it to be um, and wrote in church steeple and sticking just, out of trees and it just put it there put it in this the exact style so like i have this like uh old timey grainy yeah. textured uh look and it recreated that and so when i think of ai now for me um it's like a an assistant yeah. so um, are you using ai assist in adobe or are you yeah using in something? photoshop oh, they, they've integrated it with yep. photoshop got it so a lot of the a lot of time of what I do is spent looking for images because that's what I do. I piece together different images to create the, the final. Um, and a lot of my time is spent combing through images. And so I've got this like robot assistant that combs through a bunch of images yeah. and gets that's me what I want. Yeah. Um, and now are you working all on <clears throat> keyboard screens, digital tablets, or do you do some stuff in a tactile? Um, not yeah, not way. for not for any of this stuff. Um, I do some funny uh, other things like these toys. I make these. Uh, yeah, you. Yeah, let's get into that. Yeah, I wish I would have brought one of those, but. Um, well, we can look at the website. Yeah, look at the, the website the, has some of that. Um, so Vermont. you're creating these like sort of flat assets. Are so you like something like this, creamy? Y you create in a poster, a postcard cards, magnets, etc. But then on your website you also have Vermont compliant syrups. I don't know if they're gags. Illegal. Can yeah. we go to the which where is that on the where do where is that on this drop oh, down God. here? I don't know Can if we it's see it? on there. Now that I think about it. Oh magnets. It's under magnets. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you see the Vermont compliance syrup down there. Yeah, so scroll down a little bit, right in the middle there. I think it's um, if I got that right. Yeah. That middle um, yellow. It's the yeah the that we'll one. Click there. on that and let's see if we can big big. Oh, that's the that's oh, the compliance chili. Oh, okay. Well, chili. that's compliance chili. <laughs> okay. I see. I, I have one idea and I I go with it. Yeah. Right. So I make these little toys. Okay. Um, and I've been making those for a, a number of years now, um, and that's probably the most tactile thing. That, and what that is I do. what's how do you make that? What's the pro you making that at home with tiny little Yeah, so uh, I, and like I I have So you're not sending this off to No, that and I have like a really long explanation of how I make them because for the price that I sell them at, I think people assume that they are made by a a machine yeah. um, and I'm like, "No, I I like hand cut all of this stuff in my home, you know." So yeah, for those, I the process on that is I, I uh, print the back on a sheet of cardboard, okay. chipboard, yeah, um, and then I print the front on sticker paper. And like this process I, has taken me like uh, years to to perfect because okay. um, I used to do it totally different. It's much harder. Yeah. So then I print the front on uh, sticker paper. Yeah. And then I um, cut both of those, stick them together, then trim them. And then uh, I fill a little bottle of syrup. Yeah, um, you find with a little a, vial. He's yeah, purchased like, the vials like online a, somewhere. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, like a two dram uh, vial. Yeah. Uh, fill each one individually with a little eyedropper kind of thing, and then uh, close it up, attach it, uh, glue it to the the little cardboard thing that I made. Yep. And then glue a little plastic bubble over it. And how did you start with the bubble? You were like, I need to like shape. I mean, you can't. You must purchase those bubbles to fit. Right. Yeah. I I bought a gross uh, years ago, uh, and so I, I and like I slowly see like these thousand little bubbles like disappearing. I think I've sold like four hundred of them at this point. Oh my God, that's hysterical. Because <laughs> I did when I looked at the website, I was like, what does he like come up with the concept and send it off? And then, how are you? putting a copyright on these so that somebody else doesn't just come in and be like, 
I want to make. Yeah, uh, well, c copyright law, I didn't know, like, is, is, like, I own it. Like, I don't have yeah. to do anything. I used to thought you had to send off for a copyright, okay. so I think I would have grounds to, okay. to sue if somebody came out with uh, Vermont compliance syrups. Yes. Um, yeah. But. And that's a magnet. Somebody can attach that to the refrigerator. Yeah, I put a little magnet on the back yeah. just because uh, a challenge. So I've made other toys as well. Like, I think I don't have any uh, um, examples to show, but the uh, Crapsters. Okay. Which were little Hot Wheels cars that I banged up. I saw up. those on your website, I thought. Oh, well, maybe I, I didn't see them there. I don't know. Yeah, you had got, are those actual Hot Wheels cars? Yeah, that I, that I take out of the, the original packaging, beat them up, create my own package, <laughs> and then write a story about how <laughs> and why this this car is the way it is. Okay. Those now I. Now that makes a lot more sense because a little bit of me, like the like anti made in China part of me was like, what is this about? What is going on? Did you find a, a factory that would make Hot Wheels cars that were beat up for I you? Wish. Is this a I, thing? I, yeah. I, I, no. I wish. Um, that's, that's That's my dream is that somebody sees <laughs> Crapsters and says that they want to mass produce them for yes. me. Yes, yeah. But, um, Someday. Yeah. Someday. Someday your dream will come true. So that's interesting, so just, Producing it, putting it on a card, putting your name on it, it's yours. Somebody can't come in and um, start mass producing this. Uh, no, I mean, they try. In the, in the art world, uh, especially like the commercial art world that I, I'm in, um, every once in a while I'll come across somebody saying like, hey, um, not to me, thankfully, but like to other people, um, I saw your stuff being sold on like another website yeah, and yeah. you know like they'll try to copy it and yeah. reproduce it happens yeah. in the fashion world all the time yeah. i hear yeah cool neat um tell me about the pin free <laughs> this is a, a gift uh, just my, somebody gave it to you my that's friend not makes, one that you've made m no i i was i'm always thinking like what's my next product yeah. and, but uh no just i have a friend who makes funny buttons yeah you must have a good group of friends that you hang out with that enjoy your sense of humor in this world. Yeah, it, it's always uh, it's always great when you can meet somebody who's also into making weird stuff. Uh, Vermont is so great for people a who make things. Yeah. Um, like I feel like everybody in Vermont has like a side hustle. And like, oh yeah, I sell eggs at the end of the road. Or yeah. um, so to. Uh, I mean, Vermont's just. Full of that's a good point. I wonder if that's. I wonder if that the side hustle is counted in the gig economy because I think the U.S. right now has like a, you know, huge amount of people that are working in the gig economy. But I wonder if eggs at the side of the road. Are yeah, well, uh, yeah. It's we have this like uh, I can't I can't remember the exact phrase for it. It's like a craft something. Um, anyway, it, you can do anything you want in Vermont unless you make over six thousand dollars. Oh. Uh, in sales, and then you have to like start getting okay. certified and uh, licensing and uh, yeah. health inspections. And yeah. um, so I, I would imagine a lot of people are in that world of selling things, making things. Um, yeah. I don't know anybody who has a full time job, like who goes to a place and, and then doesn't do anything on the side. Mm. Like I know so many people who are just like, yeah, I, I do this for 20 hours a week and I, I do that. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's a it's an odd place, Vermont. Yeah, well, that is a question. Do you want to grow this? Do you have, you know, a future where you see, you have a workshop of elves? Yes, I mean it's so funny you say that because I mean, I can't really get into it, but uh, yeah, I'm like like gonna really try to recruit a couple people. Uh, anyway, but yeah, I I um, I'm getting ready to launch a, a new card line or a new line of products uh, um, yeah. that have kind of a, it's kind of, we just started doing t-shirts and um, so this new line is gonna kind of take the t-shirts and make designs out of them. So, you know, I'm, I've got that on my plate that I'm working on. Um, Are you, you know. hand sewing the t-shirts too? Uh, them together? No, we, okay. we buy the blanks. Uh, okay. They are made in, in the uh, manufactured in the U.S., which is hard, actually kind of hard to, to find. Yeah. Um, but we do all the screen printing. Oh, uh, cool. My wife Fanny does the yeah. screen printing in the basement, and this is. I mean, we've only been doing this for like four months now, um, maybe five. 
And so like, yeah, there's that arm that's growing. Um, and then like, I also, uh, this year I am hoping to launch a, uh, <laughs> a, like a barbecue seasoning product. There you go. Because like, Just I don't a know. Just different side, yeah. Yeah, I, I base a lot of my existence on uh, potato chips. Okay, that's how you survive. Uh, and I that's think about feels. them a lot. Yeah. I eat, eat them a lot. Uh, best birthday <laughs> present I ever got was when I turned like 43 or something like that. And, and my wife bought me uh, 43 bags of, of potato chips. Different flavors? Or yeah, all, all or different. all different kinds of barbecue flavors or just? No, but the barbecue flavors were my favorite. I mean, yeah. they've always been my favorite. So, uh, a potato chip restaurant would be, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, so any, I, I, I asked myself, what are they putting on these barbecue chips? Like, I just want that seasoning. I want to put that seasoning on everything because it's my favorite flavor. So I, I just sat down and are, you know, really just started mixing things together and I, I did it. I created, you created a barbecue seasoning. I did. Yeah. And I put it on everything you can, you can do, uh, put it on ribs you can put it on chicken wings you can put it in chili like as a one have you tried it on ice cream no i'm lactose intolerant oh well there is <laughs> soy ice cream too that is true no. I, I should I, you could try that yeah. um and yeah i put uh, fried potatoes oh. um cool so i yeah i i, I have a lot you of things created your own barbecue sauce flavoring no barbecue Chips. Chips flavoring. Yeah, it's cool. called barbecue chips. Neat. Well, that gets me, because immediately when you start talking, I'm like, I have ideas. How many, how often is that part of your conversation with people like, David, David, I got an idea for you. I got an idea oh, for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it happens a lot. Or, or uh, it's it's more like, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you should do this thing. Here's this funny thing. It, and I never know how to take those. Write like. Them down. Are they? <laughs> you write them down. Uh, no, I don't know how to. I don't. I'm like, are they saying that I I should try to be good like this, you know? Or uh -huh. I, I I don't I don't know. Yeah. Um, but a lot of a lot of ideas and you know, like any idea, like most of the ideas that I have are not good, you know. And so the, the ideas people are bringing to me typically aren't very good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you hear that, folks? <laughs> Just in case you were, yeah. I mean, you got to bring ten ideas to me, and I bet One one's going to be good. And that, that's yeah. how that's how it is for me too. Like yeah. most of my notebooks, all those notebooks, ninety percent of it is is useless. Yeah. That's why I got to comb through them to get that one. Cool. Um, do you have any kind of advice for other people in the world of art or digital creation or idea generation? Yeah, I mean, it kind of like expanding on what I was just saying it will first like the writing stuff down I, I really do believe it starts with that it, because uh -huh. when you start writing stuff down um, you just become more conscious about what you're doing and what you're thinking yeah. and uh, so I, that's that's like the first one um, and you know I, my journaling over the years has gone up and down um, kind of depending on my emotional state but um, I always find that that's like a good thing for if for anyone who's trying to be more creative. Um, you don't when you start writing. So I, I used to be a writing professor too. That's one of my other jobs in my okay. past. Um, and so I'm always uh, that something I always told my students is that the act of writing, uh, especially longhand, uh, even that's a dying art, but um, just the act of writing kind of gets more ideas. So you think I have nothing to say when you sit down to start writing, but if you just start writing, um, it, it's gonna keep keep coming. So I would say like those two things. And then the, the third thing is just do it. Uh -huh. Because it, like you, you can't create anything unless you start, you know? Uh -huh. um, and you know, find, you know, sometimes it's, it's a matter of, of software like I can't I hear a lot of people say I can't afford Adobe anymore because you can't pirate it anymore like you, everybody used to um, but there you know there's like free programs you can put on your iPad um, but it's, it's just a matter of of doing it like yeah. generating those ideas yeah. and and starting yeah. and if you can't 
if you don't have access to Adobe at your house, you can come find a community media center, oh, which is where that? we're at right now. Yeah. And many of them will give you access to uh, software like that. Um, I think the last thing I have to ask you, which is probably where we should have started, is what, where did Colossal Sanders come from? Is your business name, or is that your alter ego? Um, it, it's a little bit of both. Um, I have an idea of who Colossal Sanders is. It's, so I guess, yes, it is an alter ego okay. uh, for me. Okay. Um, and I, I wish, I mean, I do have a really good story about where the name came from. Um, I feel like you're going to keep this a secret the way you're starting this, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> there, there's the real story and then there's the fake story that I okay. tell people. Okay. Um, the real story is that I just was, uh, I was kind of half asleep one day, which is where a lot of good ideas come from. Uh, I was half asleep and being a word guy, um, I was just, thinking about the two words, um, well, I was thinking of Colonel Sanders for a while. I don't, I don't know yeah. why, I probably think about him quite a bit more than the average person, but um, I was th so I was thinking about Colonel Sanders and I was thinking about the word Colonel and like how it's, it, like who made this word, you know, like. Um, Cause it's spelled. It's, it's spelled, I mean, I'm sure it's like colonel French or, or something. something yeah, yeah, yeah. colonel, so I was like colonel, colonel. And then I just thought of colossal. Um, and how it's not spelled, uh, it's not pronounced the way Colonel is, you know. It's, it, I'm sure that's like an old Gallagher joke. Uh, yeah. where, but anyway, um, so I, I just thought it sounded funny. Yeah. It, and it's like, it's not an interesting story. So what I tell people now is that um, the, the Colonel Sanders is, is a guy that KFC used, but the Colonel Sanders is actually a breed of chicken. Yeah. Um, I didn't and the, know that. Yeah, and the okay. and the colossal Sanders is a larger version of the Colonel Sanders. It's, it's a different kind of breed of chicken. In fact, it's Got the it. it's the largest chicken yeah. breed. What kind of what color is that? Chicken? It's, it's uh, a white, white chicken. yeah, it's a big white chicken. Yeah. yeah, so it's the largest chicken breed uh, in the world, and um, it inspired um, a lot of things. It inspired uh, uh, there's a rock band that it inspired. Uh, there's a Where chicken. Where are they in Finland or? Uh, I, you know, they, they long since stopped playing, so okay. it's uh, a yeah. loss to history, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, uh, Colossal Sanders. Got it. But yet your, um, your website has a crow instead of a chicken. Crow, yeah, good, good that you, you knew it was a crow and not a raven. Um, I just got lucky, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, the crow, so... The Colossal Sanders being the largest chicken, it's now known as like the super bird. Okay. So the crow, this is an homage. This is like second generation um, or maybe even third generation. Yeah. So yeah, he's like, I always think of birds as, as superheroes. Yeah. Do you and, play Wingspan? Uh, you know. Not to segue too abruptly, but. I I have been I, I have sat by while uh, while others play it and okay. it's it's beyond my level of of comprehension. I think you'll get there. I do love birds. Yeah. Though. Neat. So um, colossal Sanders, it's been great to have you here. It's it been is so fun. much fun. And um, you can check out the website if you want to find out more. ColossalSanders.com. You've been watching CCTV and Town Meeting Television. Thanks for tuning in.